Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you difficulty and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain in most cases exactly the same problem and again in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us with sufficient practice problems. And for that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 375. Please turn to it. Page number 375, the very first problem that you see there, problem number 1. Problem number 1, being 1, is very straightforward, a simple problem. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here is what the problem says. Number 1, 82% of the people had no trouble with it. I would like you to do the problem yourself first, every single time, without my having to remind you, Instinctively, I want you to pause the video as soon as, I as soon as I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, particularly when we get in the higher numbers, so as towards uh, 11 through 15. Uh, we should do it in every problem. Pause the video, solve the problem, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Do you understand? So here we go. We're being asked to compare 4 fifth minus 4 seventh, something isn't, that's right, versus 4 seventh minus 2 fifth, versus 4 seventh minus Two fifths. I'll give it five seconds to pause and then pause the video. Do it yourself. Here we go. It's a very simple problem. Obviously, it's number one. And yet, there are actually a couple of ways we can go about solving this thing. One is the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, which is to simply find the common denominator. And the common denominator, of course, here would be 35. So our job first is to make all of these denominators into 35. So let's do that. 4 fifth, if you multiply top and bottom by 7, now we'll have 7 times 5 over here. It'll be, it'll be 75, uh, 35 rather. Here, let's multiply top and bottom by 5. So we get 35 here. Let's multiply top and bottom of this thing of 5 over 5 and multiply this by 7 over 7. So now all of these fractions have the same denominator of 35. Now we have 35 here. 4, four times 7 is 28 minus 4 times 5 is 20 versus again the common denominator of 35 and we have 4 times 5 which is 20 minus 4 times 2 which is or rather minus uh, 2 times 7 which is 14 here we get uh, 28 over 35 here we get 6 over 35 multiply both multiply both columns by multiply both columns by 35 and we are done 8 of course is greater than 6 the answer is a answer is a that's it there is one more way to do this problem. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to go there right now. Let's just keep on going. Uh, number two. Question number two. Perhaps at the end, if we are in the mood, we'll come back and uh, read this problem. Uh, question number two. In question number two, they're being asked to compare. 89% of people had no trouble with it. We are being asked to compare the average of 87, 95, and 150 versus the average of 88, 95, and 129. This should be 130, not 150. Again, I'll give it five seconds to pause and unpause the video. I want you to do the problem yourself 
and then compare your work against the work that you will do to, that we'll do together okay every time do that every time no matter how simple the problem may seem no matter how silly it may seem to you that I insist on or insist that you do that there is a reason for it so here we go Again, there are two ways we can go about it. One is the traditional way, the orthodox way, the classical way, which is actually to add up the three numbers and divide by three, and that average has to be the same as that one, and compute and see which one is bigger. We're not going to do any of that, because these questions are not called quantitative computation, which is why we write down the word computation, and we cross it out to remind ourselves that these questions are not called quantitative computation. These are called quantitative comparison. We are simply being asked to compare the two quantities, not compute the bloody things. Let's just compare them, shall we? We see 87 here, we see 88 here, we see 95 here, we see 95 here. There you go, 95 is common in both columns. Why do we subtract 90? If the, if the average of these three numbers is the same as the average of these three numbers, then the sum of these three numbers has to be the same as the sum of these three numbers. The sum of these three numbers, 87 plus 95 plus 130, has to be the same as the sum of these three numbers, 95 plus 129. Obviously, subtract 95 from both sides and it drops out. I'm not going to do this, this, is, this was a waste of time, let's just do it here. Subtract 95 from both sides and it drops out. This is 87 and this is 88, it has one more here, or rather, it has one more, so if we subtract one from here, it becomes 87, same as this guy. And then this one is one more, or rather, this, this guy is 129, 129 is one less, 129 is 1 less than 130, so if we add 1 to it, take away 140 and give it to this guy, it becomes 130 and this becomes 87. The answer is C. They are the same. So this is 87 and this is 88. This is one more. This is this is this is 87 and 88. The 88 is one more than 87 and 129 is one less than 130. They cancel each other out. The answer is C. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Similar problem. This one, this one is number 8. It appeared on page number 200. If we just look for the page 200, you'll find it. Here's, here's the question. The average of 12 and 20, we are told is equal to, we are told that the average of 12 and 20 is same as the average of 15 and x. Average of 15 and x. And what we're being asked to compare, what we're being asked to compare in column A, we have x. And in column B we have, in column B we have 16. Again, I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Average of, average of 12 and 20, average of 12 and 20 we are told is equal to the average of 15 and x. How does x compare to 16? I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Again, you could set it up. You could set it up in a very traditional way, very orthodox way, and do all the work, but it's not necessary. If the average of these two numbers is same as the average of those two numbers, then their sum has to be the same as sum of these two numbers. Let's, I see 12 here. I see 15. Here, or rather, better yet, I see 15 here. I see 20 here. And let's let's subtract 15 from both sides. Let's subtract 15 from both sides. The 20 becomes 5. That's it. We're done. X equals 5 plus 12. X equals 5 plus 12, which is 17. And 17 is more than 16, the answer is 8. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do it on the top. Of course, these are problems that we have already done because this is on page number 200, we are on page number 375 now. Let's do one more. This one appeared as number 2 on page number 302. We are told that the average of 13. 31 and 81. This is column A. We're being asked to compare. We're being asked to compare the average of 13, 31, and 81 versus column B, average of 13, 30, and 81. Now, so what can we do? Do it yourself. Compare the two quantities, don't compute them. Here we go. 13 appears here, 13 appears here. First of all, important thing to keep in mind is that they are same number of numbers. What we are doing here would not work if we had three numbers on this side and four numbers on that side. If the numbers of numbers is the same in both scenarios, then the sum of the numbers in the first group 
has to be the same as the sum of the numbers in the second group because it's the same number of numbers. Here we have three numbers, here we have three numbers, which means sum of these three numbers has to be the same as sum of these three numbers. We see 81 here, we see 81 here, it plays no role. Let's subtract 81 from both sides. We see 13 here, we see 13 here, it plays no role. Here we have 31, here we have 30, which means the average of these three numbers is going to be more than the average of those three numbers. Now can you tell me how much more the average of these three numbers, if you had to tell, if you had to figure it out, can you tell me very quickly in a matter of fraction of a second, the average of these three numbers is going to be how much more than the average of these three numbers? Do you know? The average of these three numbers, because it's 31 versus 30, the sum is one more. The sum of these three numbers is one more than the sum of those three numbers, which means the average of these three numbers, whatever it is, is going to be one third more than the average of those three numbers. Here's the average of, this is the average of these three numbers, which is same as this guy, and it's going to be one third more. Number two. Uh, question number three, rather. Question number three. Let's hope I hope. Let's hope that I remember to go back to number number one and redo it one more time, in a different way. Number three. Seventy-seven percent of the people had no trouble with it. Here is what we are told. Time. Time it takes. Time it takes to drive. 300 miles at 52 miles per hour. Time, the amount of time it takes to drive 300 miles at 52 miles per hour. That's our column A. And in column B we have time it takes to drive 240 miles at 40 miles per hour. Go ahead, do it yourself. Always remember what these questions are called. These questions are called quantitative comparison. As I always remind you over and over again, these are not called quantitative computation. Don't waste your time computing everything. Nobody is asking us to compute anything. I'll give you five seconds to do the problem yourself, and then we'll compare your work against the work that we'll do together, okay? Here we go. I meant to say, what I meant to say is that I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video, not to do the problem, obviously. The amount of time it takes to travel, travel 300 miles is just 300 divided by the speed, which is 52. That's this quantity. Here we have 240 miles we are going at 40 miles per hour, you see. Here we have 240 miles, and this is miles per hour. The miles are going to drop out, and the hour is going to end up on the top. That's how many hours it takes. This is very easy. It's just it's just 24 divided by 24 divided by 4. It's just 6. This is 6. What about this quantity? Well, do we waste our time trying to figure out what this quantity is? The answer is no. What we have to understand is that what we have, what we have to understand is that instead of 52, had it been 50, had it been 50, 300 divided by 50 is exactly 6. 300 divided by 50 is exactly 6. Therefore, 300 divided by 52, because 52 is a larger number, is going to be something less than 6. This quantity is going to be something less than, this is how we write something less than 6 with a minus sign on the top. Something less than 6 versus 6, the answer is B. What it, what it is actually, we really don't care. Number 4. Question number 4. Question number 4. It's another easy question. 86% of the people had no trouble with it. Here's what they're being asked to compare. Negative 5 raised to 6 versus negative 6 raised to 5. Very simple, very straightforward question. See what you can do there. So here's, what, here's what's going on here. Let's erase this part. We don't need any of this now. What we have to realize here is that here we have a negative quantity, a negative number being raised to an even power, a negative number being raised to an even power becomes positive. Because negative times negative is positive. And if you do it even number of times, this is a positive quantity. Whereas here we have a negative quantity being raised to an odd power. A negative number, negative six, a negative number being raised to odd power will remain negative. 
So in this column we have a negative quantity, in this column we have positive quantity, obviously positive quantity, whatever that is, so it's going to be bigger than a negative quantity. The answer is A. The answer is A. Let's go back to number one and redo it, shall we? The way we're going to redo number one has to do with the concept that we learned some times ago on several occasions, as a matter of fact on more than one occasion, which has to do with being able to compare fractions, being able to compare fractions in a jiffy, because sometimes they give you problems where they give you two fractions in the two columns and our job is to compare them and figure out which, which fraction is bigger. And they, of course the answer has to be a definite answer, the answer cannot be D, it's going to be a definite answer, and they're not going to be obviously equal, so it's going to be either A or B. Let's, let's see what happens. But here's what, here, here's what the problem was. Number one, and one more time, 4 fifth minus 4 seventh versus 4 seventh minus 2 fifth. Now if you feel that I'm making too much fuss about it, then, then so be it. But I want to get it out of my system, so here it is. Another way we could have solved this problem is to bring all the fifths on one side and all the seventh on the other side. That's another thing that I like to do. When we have different things, we can bring all of them on one side. So there is a seventh. Let's bring all the seventh on that side and bring all the fifth on this side. Let's add two fifth to this side and let's add two fifth to this side, this column. As long as we add the same number to both columns, we are fine. As soon as we add the uh, same number to both columns, this two fifth here drops out. And let's add 4 7 to both columns. And this 4 7 is going to drop out because it's negative and positive. 4 fifth and 2 fifth is going to give us 6 fifth versus 4 plus 4 is 8 7. And what do we do next? What we do next is what we learned a long time ago, which is how to compare the fraction. This is how we compare fraction. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 8. 5 times 8 is 40. And here we get. 7 times 6, 7 times 6 is 42, and therefore this is bigger than this. The answer is A. The answer is A, which is exactly what we found earlier. The answer was A. Now by the time we got to this stage, by the time we got to this stage, 6 fifth, 6 fifth versus 8 7, because it is so simple, what I'm about to do does not work all the time, but because this is so simple, other way, could have, other way we could have looked at this thing is, there are several different, there are different vantage points, different people look at the pro same problem in a different way. Another way we could have looked at this thing is very quickly realized the 6 fifth is same as 1 and 1 fifth, and 8 7 is same as 1 and 1 seventh. 1 and 1 seventh. Subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract 1 from both columns, and now of course 1 fifth is more than 1 seventh. So that's another way of looking at it. Let's do one more problem dealing with uh, dealing with uh, comparing fractions. Let's, let's, let's learn how to compare a fraction one more time. But before we do that, I want to make sure that you understand why we are allowed to this, why this technique works. Do you understand the theory behind this technique of cross multiplying? Here's what's going on. 6 fifth versus 8 seven. What we are essentially doing is we're multiplying both sides of the column, both columns by 5. We multiply both columns by 5 to get rid of this 5. And then we multiply both columns by 7. We multiply both columns by 7 to get rid of this 7. And what do we end up with? We end up with 8 times 5. We end up with 8 times 5 and 6 times 7. Voila. This is what's going on behind the curtain. This, this is what's going on behind the curtain. This is the theory behind it. This is what we see on this stage. To save a few seconds, we just cross multiply. That's all. But this is essentially what we're doing behind, behind the scene. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more here. You do it yourself. 3 7 versus 4 9. 3 7 versus 4 9. Now that you know what to do, a problem like this only takes 5 seconds. That's all. It only takes 5 seconds. 3 times 9 is 27. And oh, plastic. Oh, I was so cocky, I made a mistake. This, this is not what you want to do. This is not what you want to do. You want to follow the arrow. 3 9 times 3 is 27. It goes here. And 7 times 4 is 28, it goes here, and therefore this fraction is bigger. It's just as well that I made a mistake because now we can learn from the mistake. Let's do one more. It's very important not to be cocky in the exam. Because that's when that's when you begin to make silly mistakes. 6, 7 versus 7, 8. Again, 7 times 7 is 49. And 6 times 8, 6 times 8, 6 eighths of 6 eighths of 6 eighths of 48, that's 48 is more, 48 is less than 49, the answer is this one. 
Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Five eight versus seven over eleven. Five eight versus seven over eleven. It's going to get five times eleven. Five times eleven versus eight times seven. Five times eleven is fifty-five. Eight sevens are eight sevens are seven sevens are forty-nine. Forty-nine plus seven. 49, 50, 56. And this guy is bigger. Let's do one more. Four fifths versus five seven. Four fifths versus five seven. Again, five times five is going to be twenty-five, and four times seven is going to be twenty-eight, and twenty-eight is bigger than this twenty-five. The answer is this. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.